Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is why I'm watching Pretty Little Liars Original Sin. Chapter 7, Carnival of Souls. <laughs> These mothers are terrible. The what? Mothers. Oh, yeah, no. They're all garbage. Real bad. <laughs> Real bad. Still, so far, Sydney is still... She's the best. Mostly okay. <laughs> but she keeps, like... Oh, what's I had a phrase I wanted to use, and I don't remember what it was. She keeps like sort of sniping in regards to Imogen, like she, like <laughs> like she doesn't want to be in this position because she said <laughs> she said to Tabby where she was just like, "It's so good to get out and have some finally have some time with just you and me," and it's just kind of I'm like, I mean, I don't it's know, not it's great. <laughs> It's certainly not as bad so far as what the rest of them have done. Imogen needs somebody to give a fuck about her. Chip. <laughs> well, it seems Chip does. And I'm scared. I'm real scared. Well, especially because... This is a big Chip. Yeah. Chip's a good guy episode, yeah. and those never bode well in the long term. So it's either he's actually a bad guy, or he's going to be murdered any minute. Mm -hmm. Um, I am not as worried that he's evil except for he was seemingly obsessed with tabby until this episode i wouldn't go because he even said crushing i well, don't okay, think obsessed, he was obsessed then, yeah. but i'm terrified that he's <laughs> the father and he's sort of attempting to try and like make it right by being nice that's my fear yeah that's a, that's a fear to have <laughs> <laughs> he's he's probably well him and Ash are yeah. the are the two that I like, the two cute ones. I can't with Sean. No. Nope. There's something about him that is real off-putting. Well, and this show is so funny because there, there's been like a handful of plots where I'm like, why is the show treating it like it's a big, treating this thing like that's a big deal? And then I'm like, oh, because they're making it a plot. Like, they're making it yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Like, the scene where uh, Noah went to, like, the physical trainer or whatever, yeah. and he gives her the inhaler. And, like, they just were really sort of, like, pointing at it. And I was like, so? <laughs> what? And then later she brings it up to him, and she's like, isn't that weird? And I'm like, no. And now, and, and then... And she, then well, she, she's like, is it could also be considered doping. And I'm like, I mean, it depends on what's in it. If it's just, like, a histamine blocker mm -hmm. thing or something, then I think that's allowed but then well then she's in the the, the locker room and she waits till everybody leaves and she's like <laughs> and you were like well if you do it like that if you're making it illicit then it's illicit but if it first of all the track coach sent her to this doctor so it's already sanctioned by the school yeah, school sports people never well, been the rules. I've seen varsity or have, blues. <laughs> or have weird ulterior <laughs> motives. I'm just saying, it's like, it would be weird for her to get in trouble. Like, if she were to get in trouble, she could just say, well, the coach sent me, and he was like... I just feel like it's an addiction plot that they're... Oh, God. ...given her mother, and I don't know. Well, and then, okay, but I'm not a good uh, focus group or whatever for this plot. Because I had an inhaler and I loved it because I would get high off of it. <laughs> so I'm like, they're great. If you do like more pumps than you need, you get this really great buzz. <laughs> so maybe, maybe she should be concerned. Um, I didn't do it a lot. Well, you also stopped having an inhaler after a while. Sure. <laughs> so M Mouse finally got some plot and yeah. boy, howdy, did she. She got three plots this episode. She did. She really she did. She was the one that I was having, like, the hardest time sort of, like, grasping. Her stuff so far has been the most mysterious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, her and Ash are dating. It is so adorable. Because she called him her boyfriend. And he, he was... is also so attentive. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about this show and these types of shows is that they give you one thing that is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. And they just don't really address it. Like this indoor carnival. <laughs> what the fuck? He said it. He was like, oh, this carnival is just inside their school. And I and was you were like, like, no, what? surely not. No. I was like, you're out of your goddamn mind. And then all of a sudden I was like inside Space Mountain and I could see all the of raptors. The raptors. <laughs> well, because the shot, the flashback, because it's also the same carnival, which again, I, or that I, I. It's like a fall carnival. 
But it like it's been 20 years and they haven't even repainted. I don't know. Don't have any money. <laughs> the paint hasn't faded. We don't use Well, it's inside, so it doesn't mean the thing. We don't use steel like we used to. <laughs> so because they they were like coming out of the school, and I was sort of like, okay, so the carnival was like around the school. And then later when we get to it, they're going into the school. Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't wrap my mind around that. I mean, it was in the gym and typically like gyms would have door. Do they have doors that you can get like equipment in? Well, so the thing about uh, traveling, I I assumed it was like a traveling carnival. And the thing about them is that they do break down completely. Okay. No, I, okay. I, I, I was factoring that yeah. in, but I was still thinking these were going to be, like, fucking, like, but I well, guess they'd have to fit in a trailer. Yeah, that's why everybody okay. says that actually traveling traveling carnivals are safer. are safer than, like, Disney World, because you they are They're checked constantly, constantly put up and down and checked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And it was cool. It was beautiful. We love the it atmosphere, cool. but... I love a, like, s- vaguely old-timey carnival. It's, like, so fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyways, so Mouse... I don't even know where to start with her because I was going right to the her be- well, her and Ash well, were we, chased through the We should start with Steve because she like finished the plot with Steve in this episode. Hopefully he had even more nerve. She basically went to his work where he just works at like uh radio a shack. radio shack. Yeah. And it she- was called like it was called like Technical <laughs> Hut or yeah. something, but and she was like, hey dude fucking cut it out because he like texted her again um, and he was like you've gone too far coming to my place of business <laughs> and i was like how dare you but then we and find she out- also was like i'll dox you yeah. yeah but then we find out she pursues them yeah that's wild so is she charging them like, I don't know. what is this business model? I don't know that. I, and then, what are the pictures for? If she was, I thought that they were weirdly like, in, like, is it sentiment? Is she getting something out of it? So I think so. Yes, I think I don't think she's getting paid, and I think it's emotional on her end too because she almost got snatched when she was little. So it's it's cathartic for her as an almost snatched kid, and it's cathartic for them as people who had their kids snatched. Okay. It, that's weird. It's so weird. <laughs> and so then she's like cutting up the pictures. And I was sort of like, but isn't this your like evidence? Like, isn't this your insurance? But I mean, I, don't I guess think she's it was wearing a, the mask. Yeah. So it could, I don't know. I also don't think it, I don't think the pictures were about that. I think the pictures were like trophies kind of. I don't think there was any insurance. So I think Steve is the first one who's ever pushed back. Okay. Yeah. But, and so then, so... That just raises further questions. Well, and because- <laughs> yeah, he tells her that he recognized her the first time he saw her because he completely is completely separate from her yeah. seeking him out. Those are two different incidents because yeah. he's in a support group for snatched kids with her mom, the meaner one, Elodie. Yeah. And he like she apparently tells the group that she was successfully snatched and they meet every other Tuesday to which Mouse was like, no, that can't be. That's when she yeah. goes to book club. And I was like, What about Ellie. every other Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Mouse. It was very, what's his name from Yellow Jackets? With, book club's not real! <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part of Yellow Jackets. It was the best one. That all was, you know, so then she goes home to kind of confront her mom. And she's she's doing very like... Is that your new book for book club? (laughs) Is it open to all ages? Well, so my favorite thing, which this kind of goes to what I was saying about the inhaler plot, was it opens up with her telling uh, Ash about the time that she was almost kidnapped. And she's pretty clear that she was like, a a weird man came up, (laughs) offered me candy, and tried to walk off with me, and they never found him. To which Ash goes, who was he? (laughs) And I was like, a weird man that walked up and gave her candy and tried to walk off without her with her. And then they never found him. And he was never seen again. And so she just replies with, I don't know, a stranger. And I was like, this is not how people talk. But then we, they had to they had to get that line of dialogue out because the reveal is that it was probably or possibly her birth father. Oh, no, Elodie says it was. Elodie says for sure, yeah, that it was her birth father. But also, 
th- that raises further questions for me because her, her explanation is, I needed money. Her explanation is, <laughs> I stole a baby. <laughs> her explanation is, I needed money and I saw a listing to become a surrogate. So I did. It was like, and then it's... She, Mouse is like, how did you keep me? It was real off the books. <laughs> it was so off the books. She was like, we didn't go through an agency. It was just us. And I'm like, I'm still stuck on how did you keep this baby if there was a father? Like, there was not even a like, well, he and the mother broke up and they didn't want a baby anymore. It was it was nothing. It was just, well, you know, we didn't use an agency. Them's the well, She ran away. She decided she wanted it and ran away. Yeah. All the moms are like... Back to her hometown? <laughs> All of the moms are like, oh my God, why is this happening to us? And I'm like, because you're bad people that committed you're, crimes? You're pretty shitty. <laughs> it's pretty shitty. Because Elodie also <laughs> led Angela on, sent Angela on a crisis of identity, and then threw her under the bus with fucking Davy, that yeah. thunder cunt. I'm glad she's dead. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, they were they were also in the Hall of Mirrors, and they started making out Angela and Elodie, and then Davy came in, and and Elodie was like, oh my god, gross. And like pushed her away. <laughs> so, uh, is that all of Mouse's? That is basically it. She, d- she did re- a really good job in the Hall of Mirrors. Like being super terrified. And Ash, well, and Ash, Ash was- never saw it. Yeah. Uh, they made a point that mm-hmm. he never like laid eyes yeah. and so i was like that's that she messy. was it was like but but also his response to her being so spooked was actually great he mm-hmm. was not like oh my god babe it's just it's nothing he was like very there with her and so shirley left elodie and well shirley kicked elodie out oh okay yeah so uh Corey's still the worst she's just in a wheelchair now it's like jaws she's just like <laughs> to menace Farron I I don't know Farron her like back pain was a thing she she told yeah chronic pain she told Henry Henry told Madame Giri who this bitch every time she's like Farron I'd like to speak with you and then they go into her office and she's like I shouldn't be telling you this but (laughs) every fucking time she also broke her ankle and then just ace bandaged it and finished La Silphine or whatever. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Yes, that's a thing. That's Fontaine danced well into her fifties. No, <laughs> they tell every ballerina that they condition that. No, they literally. No, I believe you. Condition you to to, to ignore your pain. Yeah, it's don't, don't do that. <laughs> that's why when they were trying to find the scar on Kelly slash Karen's yeah. foot, and I was like, she's a fucking ballerina. There's... Their feet are mangled. If she you... has toenails, I'd be <laughs> yeah, surprised. <it's> like... <laughs> She went to another doctor. Madame Giri sent her to another doctor who was like, essentially, your scoliosis surgery did like unfixable damage, essentially. You have to do physical therapy three times a week. You have to wear a back brace and you can't dance for six months. So she has, she got Giselle. She, she'll have it again by this week's episode. Well, I was about to be like, also, they're doing Giselle, which yeah. Giselle is badass. Yeah. The Giselle, the, the ballet, it's basically, it has like a happy ending. But it's basically about a fuck boy who like seduces girls for funsies and then pieces out and she dies of a broken heart. And then these like furies come in <gasps> to dance him to death. Nice. As punishment. But yeah. she like takes pity on him and saves him. Love that. I wish. She didn't, well, I wish but... she didn't do that. I, I love the rest. <laughs> but I was like, please give us Giselle. Like, parent, 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 yeah. uh, par- uh, um, not paradox. Um, Parallel. <laughs> Parallels. I made a 760 on my verbal SATs. <laughs> the image. Oh, she, well, she's also not. I'm uh, sorry. Farron is not angry at Henry. She's angry at the situation mm-hmm. and her mother. I mean, it was a little. It was shitty for him to go above her head. Uh, above to make a, stop making decisions about women's bodies. <laughs> Uh, Imogen, we kind of touched on it, but she had this really dumb baby plot. That's just not a thing. It's in every single... No, we never did anything. <laughs> we, we didn't do an egg. We didn't no. do a sack of flour. We didn't do a fake baby. But her and Chip had to take care of the fake baby, and A took it from her and was like, you're a bad mom, and then yeah. she was trying to decide if she wants to keep the baby, and I mean, y- this stuff is just a mess and yeah. not an issue I will ever be in, 
but uh, my male opinion is. My lady opinion is <laughs> get that baby, give it away. I like also, I, I almost mentioned it in the last episode, but um, they did, they brought it up in this episode that the baby is a product of rape. And I think she's being shockingly chill about, oh, it's gonna catch up with about her. that. I mean, I think the catching up happened in episode one when she was like, I need you to get the baby out. <sighs> but she basically, she made the good point that she was like, this kid is going to get like tortured if I keep it and I try to raise it and everything because everybody's going to find out somehow. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see how they go with that. If they manage to like, if they manage to have that information come out in like an organic way, I'm interested to see. I am interested to find out if, or see if we do find out who the father is. Cause pr I would imagine presumably whoever it is also, um, was at the party. Well, also raped Tabby. I would assume it was the same person. Probably. I'll probably. I mean, I don't think it's certain. There's just like but... two date rapists running around. Yeah. Ugh. It's Millwood. <laughs> I guess. What was Tabby? She tried to go to the. They were talking about how they should tell someone about the rapes, and she decided to go talk to Deputy Maroon. And Who I'm assuming was the smiling woman on the, the wall. The only them. woman on the wall. Um, and then instead, the sheriff, the like, sheriff Slender Man, spotted Thank her you. and was like, I've been meaning to talk to you because you assaulted Tyler. And I was just like, And they can't find Tyler. Yeah, Tyler had it coming. Um, and so he was just like really gross and smarmy with her too. And so we've given, I, know. I've given Tabby a bit of a hard time. I overwhelmingly preferred her tete a tete with. Uh, Sheriff Beasley than I did hers with Tyler. I think the yeah. one with Tyler, it was a little too like saying the thing. Where yeah, with Sheriff yeah. Beasley, it was a bit more check counter. Like. I I agree with that a hundred percent. I also just I found her a very compelling performer in this episode, like an actress. In They're this toning episode. her down, which yeah. I think was very needed. Yeah. And well, and her movie references now make sense. No, they do, and also we 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 pass right over she also has to take a her like final project her film class is like um like an homage kind of a thing mm -hmm. to something and um then at work wes and chip are talking about doing a virgin spring and then what was the other movie last house on the left, last house on the left like double feature and she kind of like lets them have it and that fantasy sequence where she just stabbed Wes in the hand and it was like really bad effects uh, but I, I believe on purpose it was like so excellent but she just is like if you want to have a misogyny film festival then like go ahead but like you don't know what you're talking about you're you know well Wes is talking out his ass like a film person because Rachel was like oh no and I was like it's a really Virgin Spring is a really well regarded Bergman movie so they're but, all yeah all art is valid art it's just the, the context and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way that things are uh, skewed. Yeah. And it's like certain art gets more attention yeah. than it maybe needs to. I'm just or... like, how about do like Virgin Spring and Promising Young Woman? Mm -hmm. That's two different approaches to the thing. You know, that's that's my two cents. I don't, I don't, I've never seen Last House on the Left. I don't really like that brand I've only actually seen the remake but slasher stuff but Sarah Paxton it's and whatever. Oh, yeah. Monica Potter and Ricky Lindholm it's a, it's a real tour de force yes. Yes. <laughs> but regardless she basically is like I'm not going to be a part of this and she sort of walks off and I don't know I, I am Chip is riding the line his stuff with Imogen was really cute but he I agree he's a little he was like too on board to the to the point where at the carnival he they like see a happy family and it seems like he's asking Imogen if she would ever consider keeping the baby. I think he's the father. I think so too. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like that. He's so he's so cute. Mm -hmm. He's my Greg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it how you phrased that. <laughs> Made me look at myself from a different lens. <laughs> Uh, Greg was in this one. Yeah. He's still being a little bit weird. The well, I can boy. They're all kind of weird. I can call him because that <laughs> that boy that Tabby that the hit on Tabby store. at the bookstore. And I was like, he's a good one. I can tell. No. 
he came, him and his bros came charging into this carnival. Yeah. Ugh. And then, well, it wasn't even Greg that challenged them, though. It was Sean. It was Sean. And you're right, because they're all high from the inhaler. Well, Ugh. so that's the thing. So Sean very specifically said he wasn't using an inhaler. But then later, of course, yes, later when that confrontation happened and Noah was like, what's gotten into you? And I was like, nothing. Just the fucking steroids, steroids. from that inhaler that we all use. Um, I mean, that has to be that has to be it. <laughs> the reason why he's acting crazy. We still don't really know what or why Tabby's doing that with the boys locker room because I, I can't imagine yeah. she's attempting to identify which one because she doesn't really remember. Yeah, I think she must be. She keeps getting flashes. She remembers more than Imogen does. I guess. So she keeps getting flashes and I think But maybe... it's like a girl's face laughing is always first. Yeah, I don't know. That's not Karen, I don't think. Karen no. or Kelly. And I also don't know, like, why would she recognize his penis? Like, I mean, especially... What? I can pick out of the lineup. Well, you can. <laughs> Do you, you think? I don't think if she's that fuzzy on the details that she looked down while it was happening with enough clarity to like be able to pick his dick out of a lineup. So that's uh, that is what I am sort of sketchy about. And then she seems to be trying to use the upcoming blood drive to identify. She has to have blood or something. something. I can't okay. figure out okay. what is happening. There has to be another yeah. element. Because she's going, she's also, she because she never tells the deputy because the sheriff interrupts her. And then she's going to go tell the nurse about her rape. And instead, she sees the sign for the blood drive. And she's like, hey, who donates? And I'm like, are you a vampire? What are you doing? <laughs> who all donates to your blood drive? Also, I'm glad we kept talking because we had a spectacular scene with the Beasley family. Oh my god. Walking through the carnival where Martha is is just <laughs> She is like a little chihuahua. <laughs> and she's like, oh, oh. She's <laughs> talking about the curtains. Yeah. And the taste of strawberries. Uh no, she was like, why don't we go play cornhole? And he was like, We can't play cornhole, you cow! Wait. You need four people to play cornhole. And then he smacked her a few times. It was like... <laughs> and and Kelly was like, yeah, because I'm not enough. And I was like, well, you are not two people. <laughs> That's so right, there. Kelly. <laughs> I'm starting to see why Karen was the favorite. <laughs> so then they decided to go bob for apples. Disgusting! Yeah, also not great. <laughs> In this indoor carnival. I don't know why it being indoor makes it grosser, but it is. It's not amazing. It's not amazing at all. <laughs> I think that was that was mostly it. I'm kind of having a blast. Yeah. I am at this point a little bit more than halfway in to, to one season. I am really enjoying the chaotic balance between like actually intriguing like and well done mm -hmm. and then just sort of bonkers. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a it's a fine fun line. <laughs> I think we also didn't mention in the last episode that Kelly has completely quit ballet. Yeah. Like, like fully. Not just whatever show. Although she'll probably be Giselle at some point. <laughs> so, okay. Well, um, hopefully we will be back yep. uh, Thursday or Friday to watch episode eight and talk about it in a timely manner. Huzzah! Bye! Bye!